So what listens, what speaks, what thinks, what feels, what smells, what sees everything is open intelligence. What learns about open intelligence is open intelligence. And for me it's been so beautiful to be in this training where I've been given this set of tools but I can recognize more and more that my intelligence is always naturally present, it's wide open like a clear sky, and it's potently beneficial. And um, through participating in the Four Mainstays, in the Balanced View training, that has just very naturally and very organically become more and more obvious and become more and more my everyday lived experience of life. So open intelligence is the intelligence that pervades all experience. It's the ability to know. And until I had come to this training, I just hadn't recognized that it was there. I hadn't noticed that there was something about me that was an essential requirement for any experience that I was having. Any thought I had, any feeling, any sensation, any of this data that was just streaming through my experience, there was a fundamental intelligence that was required for any of this to be known. And the reason that it had gone unnoticed was that I'd simply been completely focused on all of the ever-changing descriptions on this uh, stream of data. And so completely involved with all of these descriptions that that had been the sole focus of my experience and my, my understanding. And all of my understanding had been based on these ever-changing descriptions. And so these descriptions were about myself and about other people. You know, how am I feeling? What's my opinion about this? Do I like it? Do I understand it? Am I feeling happy? Am I feeling sad? Do they like me? Do they not like me? This constant flow of ever-changing descriptions. And um, it made life really difficult because the descriptions were always changing. One morning I would wake up and I'd feel great, like you know, I was just like the, the coolest person on the planet. And the next morning I'd wake up and I'd just feel like the biggest loser on the planet. And, and nothing had changed in my life circumstances. And yet these just descriptions would define the way then that I encountered the rest of my day. And so I searched really hard to try and understand how I could control these descriptions. You know, how I could bring about a set of positive descriptions and then I would feel happy in my day. And I worked really, really hard at that for decades. And I became quite skillful at it. You know, arranging my life so that I could spend time in places where I you know, felt more happy than in other places. And hanging out with people that generally made me feel better about myself than other people. You know, trying to look after my health, trying to get enough money, trying to eat well, trying to find the right uh, intimate partner. All of these things I worked at so hard, you know, I really, I really did my best. And um, what was incredibly confusing for me was that no matter how hard I worked, no matter how perfect I arranged my circumstances, some mornings I would wake up feeling like the coolest person on the planet, and other mornings I would wake up feeling like the biggest loser on the planet. And I just, it just didn't make any sense to me. So what I saw from other people was I needed to work harder. I needed to really, really work harder at managing everything. I needed to eat better, take more exercise, find a better intimate partner, <laughs> live in an even more beautiful place. All of these things, and it was just this ongoing project where I never actually reached a place where I could relax. And so, with the introduction to open intelligence, which occurred 
very gently and very naturally just by showing up at these meetings. At the beginning, so much of what was said was just incomprehensible, but there were certain things I heard in the meeting that just, just touched me so deeply and so accurately and clearly described and mirrored my own experience. That, that I just came back. I wanted to hear more about what was being shared here. And um, I began to participate in the trainings here and um, it was incredible to see all of the bizarre games that I'd been playing in my life and with myself and with other people and the, the various ways that I contrived my behaviour. Know, trying to impress people, trying to make people like me, trying to be funny, trying to be relaxed, doing all of these things to try and relax. But it was such hard work trying to relax and you know, lying on the sun lounger and trying to relax. And okay, oh God, five minutes, yeah, right. Oh, that's my relaxation done. That's enough of that. And it just there was no relaxation because the data was so, it was so insistent. You know, all this commentary about what was going on, and a lot of it was about myself, and um, often it wasn't very flattering. And I began to see all of this more and more clearly. I began to recognize all of it as data shining forth from open intelligence. And just that one insight brought me incredible relief and incredible clarity in many, many situations. It meant for the first time in my life I could actually relax because I recognized the nature of my experience. And in this space of relaxed openness, I began to discover that I could actually utilize my life and all of this incredible energy that I felt all of the time to be of benefit to myself and other people. Now this was something very new for me. This was not what I had learned in school. This is not what I'd heard in the media that I'd grown up watching and online on the internet and different websites, that my life could be a life that could be lived with more and more ease and openness and with an increasing capacity to be of benefit to all. Now this was intriguing for me because I also began to see that this insight into the nature of reality, that there was this vast intelligence that was always on, was something that I could discover for myself amidst the flow of my data. So I, I didn't have to change anything. All of my data, all of my experience was already perfect for me to recognize it as this dynamic energy of open intelligence. And I could do this one short moment at a time. One short moment at a time I was given the suggestion just to relax and to allow everything to be as it is. And that at the beginning was, I, I, I'm not quite sure what that means. I'm not quite sure if, if I want to do that. I'm not quite sure if I can do that. You know, that sounds like a, a, a big thing to take on. You want me to allow all of this just to be as it is? But the power and the gentleness of the approach of one short moment at a time is absolutely key. Because it might become clear to us just how much emphasis we've placed on this whole array of data. All of these learned concepts and ideas and belief systems. And how tightly we've tried to order our world based on all of these ideas. So one short moment at a time, for me that was just a beautiful instruction because I could test for myself to see whether it was safe to allow this data to be as it was. Just one short moment at a time, could I see for myself whether open intelligence was naturally present with whatever I was experiencing in this current moment? And I tested it out. I tested it out when I was feeling happy. And there was open intelligence shining forth as happiness. I tested it out when I was sad. And there was open intelligence shining forth as sadness. It was the same intelligence that was experiencing the happiness as was experiencing the sadness. And this was incredible for me because I was seeing in my own experience what was dependable, what was reliable and what I could always count on in my own life. 
because the descriptions that I tried to base this on were always changing. How could I rely on them? And um, this brought up lots more data. And I began to worry again about, well, what, what's going to be left? You know, what, what does it mean to rely on open intelligence? You know, how do I, how do I be open intelligence? And what, what do I have to stop doing to recognize open intelligence? And the good news is that I didn't have to stop doing anything. Everything was already perfect to recognize open intelligence. I, my, one of my main fears was that, was that I'd have to stop watching football because now I was relying on open intelligence. And it's been a huge relief to find out that football is also included within open intelligence. And what I find more and more is just this relaxed openness in all circumstances. And it's just a, a really beautiful way to live. But as well as the relaxed openness, there is an increasing skillfulness and clarity in seeing exactly how I do want to show up in each circumstance and in each situation. So, for example, with the sharing of negative data, um, you know, that's as simple as, you know, seeing somebody you know, go, oh, yeah, it's been a really bad day today, and this happened, and that happened, and, and what I began to see there was that what I was trying to do there was to kind of relieve myself of this burden, of the emphasis of this negative data. And maybe if I just chuck it onto somebody else, and often it was the people that I really loved and that were close to me that somehow I learned it was acceptable to tell all of my negativity to, you know. And, uh, and um, it was interesting after being introduced to open intelligence and to see that I could take responsibility for how I used my speech and what I decided to share with people. And this increasing skillfulness of seeing, well, what will actually be of most benefit to this person and to myself in this situation. And that developed very naturally just by participating in the training and seeing, well, you know, is it really the way that I want to be in this relationship and just to use it as a dumping ground for all of this negative data. It doesn't really resolve anything for me. I might feel better for a little bit, but the negative data still comes up. And I've managed to make one other person either really miserable or really worried about me <laughs> by sharing this data. What, what's the benefit of that, either for, for me or for them? And um, so more and more you'll just see this skillfulness in yourself of how you want to use your speech. It, it's inevitable because open intelligence includes all data. The same way that space includes everything appearing within it. It's effortless. It's naturally included. You don't have to work at that or try for that to be the case. It's just the way that it is. And um, this ever-increasing skillfulness is... Um, very, very practical and it's, it's beautiful that you see how much more skillfully you can support your, your clients when you rely on open intelligence because you're meeting people from a place of just complete openness. <laughs> one, one of my insights is this um, recognition increased that um, it made me smile but it was also a little sad was that until I began to recognize open intelligence <clears throat> I had never ever actually listened to anybody, never, in the whole of my life. Because when I was in conversation with somebody, it was really irritating because you'd have to wait for that person to pause their stream of noise until you could say what was actually really interesting in the situation. And um, I began to recognize what I'd been doing in all of my conversations and to see this and to see Actually, I don't have to tell everyone everything I know. And the more I take this opportunity to recognize everything I'm feeling, including the urge to tell everyone how much I know and to show how clever I am, even to show how clever and how much I know about open intelligence, allow that to be as it is for a short moment. That's data too shining forth from open intelligence. So you can empower and exalt your arrogance or your pride. And then you become even more skillful. And what you'll find there is not only can you support your clients more skillfully, but you can also empower and support all of your colleagues and co-workers. So you continue to expand this um, 
this power to be of benefit in, in such practical ways, in, in whatever you're doing in your everyday life. The opportunity to continue to express this in, inexhaustible potency and skill, it, it's never ending. You know, the data continue to stream. Open intelligence continues to shine brightly. The opportunity to tap into this intelligence is always there. And so in each short moment, in each training you participate in, in each book you read or text you copy out or talk you listen to, you're just getting used to that reality. <coughs> you already are open intelligence. Everything else you ever learned about yourself, you learned. And it was open intelligence learning these ideas all the way along. This is why it's an effortless practice. This is why there's no destination. You already are open intelligence. It's just getting used to that fact and settling into it. And, and one short moment at a time is the perfect approach. It's so gentle, so loving, and, and really, really kind.